Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. We're now going to look at mortgages and trends within the local property market with Andrew Owen, the branch manager of Bank of Ireland in Wexford Town. Andrew, we'll be discussing mortgages and the advice which you have for potential applicants shortly, but surely the lack of houses for sale across Wexford is causing a major problem for your bank. It does, Carl. Yes, you're right. There, there is very little new property being built in Wexford. Um, the average house price in Wexford in Q1 of 2016 is up about about 165,000, which, according to DAFT, is about 10% up on uh, Q4 of 2015. It's going in the right direction, but there's probably a bit more to go for for for, for builders to start seeing that they're you know it, it it's worth their while starting to build again. And um, a lot of the market that we will be looking at in Wexford at the moment, obviously, is uh, first time buyers buying their first home, and there are some being built. And um, looking at people who are moving house, uh, so they're trading up or trading down in some cases, uh, and then also people switching their their their, their mortgages uh, from other financial institutions. Uh, and then the third, the last one, I suppose, and you mentioned it briefly, was. Uh, um, investors, people looking to buy uh, a house for, for rental purposes. Now, I want to speak to you about all of those in greater yeah. detail throughout the interview. But maybe firstly, let's go back to the house price, the average house price at 165000 What do you think it needs to be at before we're going to see some interaction in the market from the developers again? That's that's a good question, Carl, and I suppose it depends on whether you're in North Wexford or South Wexford as to, you know, where, when you take an average house price, I mean, obviously up, if you're up around Gorey, the prices are slightly higher than they are down in Wexford. You know, you have a proximity to Dublin, you have a good motorway. Certainly the motorway the, being, being extended down uh, past and Escorty, that will have, a, will, ha, will, ha, will make a difference. It'll allow people, I suppose, get down down to to past and escorting a lot quicker and make Dublin more commutable for, for some of the Wexford um, residents and that'll allow hopefully house prices go in the right direction and allow the builders. As regards a figure, I don't know what the figure is Carl uh, but certainly it needs to, be to, to and it is going in the right direction as I said this time last year I suppose when I would have spoken to you Carl the average house price in Wexford was around 140 it's now up at 165 so it is going in the right direction for developers to look at to start building. Something else that might be going in the right direction is confidence. Are you saying that yourself through the bank? Yeah, we're seeing a lot more confidence, Carl, uh, in, in, in people buying the, the number of transactions. Last year was up about 1,600-odd. Um, that's according to the property price register. Uh, there were 1,650 actual houses or transactions took place in 2015, and that's up again on 2014. So that shows a level of confidence and a level of you know more people going into the market to purchase. Now, what advice would you give to somebody, let's say, that's listening to this morning's show that is interested in going out as a first-time buyer, buying their first house? But what I would advise to a first-time buyer now is go in and talk to their local bank and sit down with a mortgage advisor and tell them exactly where they are, what they're looking at, and the mortgage advisor will give them advice on how to get themselves mortgage ready in six or 12 months' time, or maybe they're mortgage ready already, you know, but they, they will be able to have that conversation. You know, it, the conversation would be something like, you know, what sort of price are you looking at? You know, what sort of savings do you have in place? Can you prove your repayment capacity? And what I mean there is like somebody may be living at home, Carl. They may be giving their parents a few bob every week, you know, cash or whatever way it is. What I would advise is that you do that by standing order so you can actually prove that you're either paying your parents or you're paying your rent and that will sh- go towards your repayment capacity. Put a savings plan in place. You know, if you can save 100, 200 a week, whatever it might be, do it by standing order. Do it in a structured way so that you, when you come to sit down with your mortgage advisor in six or 12 months time and you're sitting there and you're trying to show that you're able to afford the mortgage that you're going to be taking on. Yes, it is a huge transaction, Carl. And I think it's one you need to get right. You know, for someone going into a bank for the first time, it can be quite, you know, it can be quite a, I suppose, a, a, not, not a frightening situation, but certainly one that someone might be a little bit nervous about. So it, I think they need to take that, that bit of nerves away, go in, sit down and have an early conversation, not wait until, you know, th- th- they see something. Get the conversation in early. The other thing about it, Carl, even if you don't have a property in mind, a lot of the banks will actually, you know, give you a mortgage um, offer based on what your affordability is and you can then go shopping and I think that's a lovely position to be in uh, because if the right house comes up you're, you're ready then to move on it. Talk to me about this new EU directive that came in recently in relation to that approval and principal letter. Yeah, the, the the new EU directive, I suppose, is about all. It's across all EU member states, Carl. It's really, I suppose, it, it brings in a higher level of of, of consumer protection. Uh, really, what it's about is having an approval and principle letter that is, it, it suppose, harmonised across all financial institutions, and 
it allows uh, the, the, the 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 borrower uh, compare. Uh, their, their, their approval and principal call across in institutions a lot easier I suppose it's comparing like with like her. We've had a good chat about first time buyers let's move on to uh, those that are looking to switch question for you first if for instance somebody listening this morning is a negative equity is that possible? It is Karen I think that there is there is this con- perception out there that if you're in negative equity you can do nothing what I would advise each of them to do is go into their into their, into their bank and sit down with the mortgage advisor and look and see what their options are there are definitely mortgage options for them and banks are working with people in negative equity to help them they might probably want to trade down maybe the family have you know moved out or whatever and they're in a position now that they can actually do something about it but all the financial institutions will support them and they'll be able to work with them. What about the central bank guidelines? Have they had any major impact here in Wexford? I know, and certainly in Cork, Dublin, Galway and Limerick they have, but has it impacted borrowers here in Wexford? Not as much as you said uh, outside where the house prices are, 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 are a lot higher. Uh, I suppose, for, particularly for first time buyers, there's no real impact on Wexford because for the properties under 220,000, you can still borrow up to 90% uh, of the value of the property. Um, if you're borrowing over that, um, obviously, you know, you, you need to have 80, you, can, you have to have 20% deposit towards the property. But where it does really impact, I suppose, is for people who are, who are um, looking to, mo- to move house uh, and tra- trade up. They, they need need to have a minimum of 20% of the purchase price of the new property. Are we finding much mortgage switching going on in the market here locally? Yes, there's a bit going on, Carl. Um, people are still slow to switch. I suppose people are still very comfortable, you know, and it's, it's, like, it's like a lot of, you know, what we pay out every month. Uh, we, we don't always uh, shop around and see what the best offers are. Um, some of the banks have quite good incentives out there present uh, for switching their mortgage, uh, which will help with um, both uh, maybe, you know, furnishing or with maybe some of the legal fees or other fees that are attached to, to moving property or moving mortgage. So uh, there is a little bit of it. There's, it's, it's not, it's not, it, it, there's not a huge amount of it, but I would encourage people to, to, to have a look around and see what offers are out there. There's a tradition out there, I suppose, when it comes to banks that if somebody has, let's say, opened their first bank account with a particular pillar bank out there and they've gone and they've saved with them and they have all of their direct debits and standing orders set up with them today, that for them to go off now and to talk to a separate bank that they have no existing relationship with, that they wouldn't be able to switch to them. That isn't right, is it? No, Carl. Um, like, if you have, what, what a bank will look for is they will look to see that you have the 10 or 20% of whatever the savings that you need, minimum savings you need for the for the property that you're purchasing, uh, they will look and see that you have a good credit history. And I think that's critically important. Uh, all, all obviously institutions will have access to the Irish Credit Bureau to make sure that the borrower has a clear uh, credit history. So it's really important that you operate your accounts properly, uh, that you make sure that you know uh, that you have repayment capacity. And that's what I mentioned there about having putting the savings in place and putting the regular rent on a standing order or whatever. Um, your outgoings are try and have them so they're structured and they're obvious that when you sit down you can prove that you can make the repayment but all a bank will really look for Carl is to see that you operate your account properly they look for six month statements from your from your from your your your, your bank uh, and so there's absolutely no reason why if you're if you're any of the banks you can go you, you can move between them to have a look for your mortgage Andrew are there many local property investors here in Wexford there are Carl yes absolutely and I think a lot of the certainly a lot of the properties um, that are the, the average, funny, the average rent in 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 Wexford is six hundred and sixteen euro, uh, and that is that is on the way up as well. I mean, we we all hear about rents in Dublin uh, moving moving up, but in 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 Wexford, they're also on the on the slight increase. Uh, the the average um, rental is about six hundred and sixteen per month in County Wexford. Uh, so there is there you know some good opportunities for investors. Um, all of the banks are very keen to get that type of business uh, and they will work with investors and a lot of them have offers for investors as well who are looking for property uh, to help them with legal fees etc. And what about the loan to value ratio in relation to an investment property is that lower? Um, under the central bank guidelines it's 70% so it is for people buying and purchasing investment properties. What about those coming home from abroad? County of Wexford lost an awful lot of people over the last 10 years due to the recession. Lots of them seem to be coming back home now. Is Bank of Ireland seeing many of them coming in your door? Yeah, we see quite a few of them, Carl, and I suppose you know uh, we generally see them coming in to open up their, their current account if they if they haven't had a current account or they haven't had an operating account already. And a lot of those conversations would be around they may have made some savings when they're abroad and they're now bringing those home. Um, you know, they will need to have, obviously, have a, have 
have uh, work here and have an income to be able to get a mortgage but we, we also see a lot of people overseas Carl who are bringing home savings and are settling in Wexford and they're bringing home sterling or maybe dollars in some cases uh, and what I advise, advise those um, customers to do is not to move their money before they come home come home open up their bank account and talk to their bank about how they can actually help them with the exchange rate on their sterling or their dollars or whatever, or Australian dollars uh, or whatever currency they're bringing home. We can definitely help them save money or make more money by bringing it in uh, in the currency that it's, that it's held in at the moment. And we will get it into their account in euros. However, we can help them by, by, by saving the money on the exchange rate. And how is that? Because what we find, Carl, is does we, Ireland is very, very heavy, heavily regulated on the margin that we can charge on exchange rates. So if you're talking about sterling, you know, the margin is quite tight. Whereas if you are in a UK bank, the margin is much higher that the UK bank can charge you. So you will actually get more uh, euro for your sterling by actually doing the exchange rate on this side. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.